welcome to lecture 4 on uh, computer architecture so we will uh, continue our discussion on uh, jump instructions so in the last lecture we discussed uh, some of the conditional jumps which are in the form of uh, b q and b and e and we just touched upon one of the unconditional uh, jumps in the form of uh, the j instruction okay so in today's lecture we'll uh, go into the detail of uh, the next two unconditional uh, jumps which are known as uh, j and j let's uh, look at how they actually behave and what what kind of functionality they provide so before jumping into uh, the actual jump instructions uh, let's look into this high level uh, program uh, that is written in like c kind of code right so in this case we have a uh, main function which is having two variables which is calling a function called sum and the sum is uh, nothing but addition of two numbers and returning it right so if we have to uh, convert this code into MIFS assembly uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is it's very simple what we need is just a jump here right so we know what to do here and here at this moment we need to jump to this function where the function is sum so something like this will just uh, do our job right pretty simple but here is a pretty subtle point we can jump into this particular function which will change the program counter and start executing the next set of instruction which is present inside the function sum but how will i return i should return here right uh, because once i am done with the functionality of the function sum i should start executing the next instruction that follow this particular function call so the complexity here lies in the return path jumping into a particular function is pretty simple you just uh, use this instruction but how do you return and that's where the problem lies so there are two instructions called jl and jr uh, i call these two instructions as awesome instruction because they work together and then uh, their functionality or their utility becomes pretty significant when they work together okay so first let's look into uh, the jl in instruction so what jl stands for it's jump and link so what it does you provide a label name so in our example the function sum okay it will jump into that but what it does at the same time is it save the address of the next instruction in a register called array so array is a specific uh, register with special functionality similar to the program counter where the program counter stores the address of the instruction here array stores the return address Th that's why it's uh, known as array okay so what it does is now you can jump to any particular function and if you want to return you can just use this instruction which is called jump register which will go to a particular register called array and uh, the array will actually point to the pc value or the program counter value where it should uh, return right so th this is the complete picture so jump and link instruction will make you jump into a function at the same time it will store the very next instruction in a register called uh, array return address and if you use a jump register instruction uh, after that you will be able to return from the function to the actual sequence of uh, instruction so uh, let's look into an example so previously i started with uh, a j here but now i have replaced that with the jl instruction so now it will go to sum so let's assume sum is the label and once it finishes the addition operation what it does is 
it uses a jump register and the jump register will jump to the program counter specified by this register okay so once uh, the jump register reads the value of RA, it will actually come somewhere here. The very next statement after the, the function. Okay. So let's have a complete picture. So what we are doing here is the left hand side of the screen is showing the sequence of program counter because that is the crucial point here. We need to understand and we should know where exactly we can jump and from where we can return right so so far so good you start with let's say pc plus four which is adding uh, to uh, adding, adding a register value with the value two and then it is calling a function sum okay so this is the label sum sum is here and look at the pc pc is pc plus 100 that means it's far away it's a different part of program and so basically you, you can assume or you can uh, re really uh, intuitively think about the usage of this instruction right so these are mainly used for routines function calls subroutines and all right so but suddenly you move to a different part of the program and that's why the pc is different pc plus 100 right you do uh, the computation that is specified within the function okay and after that we need to use the jump uh, you, you need to use the JR instruction which will jump based on the content of this particular register called array so for the for the sake of simplicity here I am uh, naming the registers as register R0 to R31 and maybe there are 32 registers so the register 31 is actually uh, the array register okay so now what will happen is you will put R31 here okay R31 is actually storing PC plus 12, which is the very next instruction after the function call. Okay. So in this way, we can uh, jump into any particular function and uh, subroutine, and we can return uh, with the help of uh, this instruction, jump register. Okay. So if we continue doing that, uh, if, if, you, if you are following the sequence of instructions, uh, at, at this particular point, what I'm doing is I'm just adding the content of two register R3 and uh, R3 what I have done is I have initialized R3 to zero. So finally I'm getting a value of uh, R0 which is zero, okay? But just to make things interesting, if I replace this R3s with let's say R2, okay? Uh, why it is interesting because R2 is used within this function right and at the end of this function the value of r2 is 6 so when you are returning the value of r2 equal to 6 is actually uh, getting communicated right and uh, now if i perform addition operation here i get a 12 right so this brings to uh, many questions right so if you are using an r2 inside a function and also in the main function how does or, or what what is the mechanism by which both the function coordinate is, is there a protocol that uh, helps both the functions what if there are multiple functions what if there are multiple returns so those are the things that we will discuss in our next video till then thanks